Hey guys, we're on the fourth cut of the AFR Blue Horned Heads. We do have the Victor 340 on. It's completely stock. I wanted to get a baseline on this before I do anything else to the heads to find out how much we actually lose. I did bolt on my old 770 Cobb. And just as a note, I was watching a video the other day and I saw them testing through a manifold. We're gonna do a, we're gonna do a quick demo on what happens, right? I've got this set up at 600 lift, which is may happen for a street application. It's just, it's a little high, but we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys what it flows right now, and then we're gonna remove the the tape, and we're gonna see what happens to the flow. Remember, guys. In order to do it right, these need to be blocked off. Okay, this one I use tape because I want to, I'm actually using the tape as a gasket at this point. Because if I go on and off with the gasket I'm given, it'll be destroyed in no time. My alignment is close. Am I going to lose a few CFM? Sure, doesn't matter. So you take this tape and you cut it out to the correct opening so the air can get through. These ends are sealed with tape. Okay, the only way to get air through the bench is through the head, through the runner, through the plenum, through the carb. That's what you need to do to test. Okay, so we're going to fire this up at 600. I'm going to open up the Venturis. We're going to see what it does. Okay, we opened up the bottom four ports. Uh, let's see what we do. Let me turn off this. There we go. Let's see what we do with it open. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to open the Venturis. Okay, we proved our point, right? Now it can suck through here, through the plenum, and then down the runner. It can suck from this side, through the plenum, through the runner. It doesn't have to suck through the Venturis. It's not an accurate test. So, if you're watching guys showing you flow through manifolds, it needs to be done right. I'm not accusing anyone, but maybe they just don't know. Okay, guys. All right, I'm on. Ugh, sorry. Okay, guys. Sorry. Got to be on the right sheet. Third cut. That's what we had. All right, these are third cut. This is fourth cut. Yeah, I did have to change a couple pluses and minuses versus the second cut. Okay, now see, that's not even right. The only thing that was changed is short side radius apex. I moved the apex back a touch. Okay, this is what it looked like before. How do you move the apex back? You have to change the shape of this arc a little bit. Okay, how did we do? Well, we got plus, 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 plus. It's still not where I think it should be at 300. Plus, plus. We top out at 272.3 at 0.55 lift, which is not bad. After that, we still have problems on the short side. As you can tell, it dips down, and then she starts gaining again. By 900, we got 271.4, and at an inch, 272.2. Notice how high the swirl is, 3540. It definitely liked a little reshaping there, because the short side radius was too fast. Okay. Can I gain some some area in that port? Yes, I think I'm going to do that next. I'm going to give it a little more area in a couple spots, and we'll see what it does. But you're also going to see what it does, what these numbers do with the manifold on. Remember, the manifold is going to change how the port reacts. So you got to do both, as far as I'm concerned. How do we do a swirl? Minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus. Minus, 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 plus, plus, plus. 
curb is fine. We actually have more than we need with just the bare head. Okay, guys, you'll like this. This is our third cut air speeds. Fourth cut air speeds. Plus, 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 plus. Notice how much better the roof is. Notice how much faster the short side is. But it still winds up losing it about the same spot. So what does that tell you? If it can hold on and move more air across it, it's a more efficient shape. So from that point, we take it and we bolt the intake on and see what we got. Now, since it's got the intake on, I would expect to lose pretty much everywhere. So we're not even going to bother putting pluses and minuses in. But if you notice, right, it's a well-designed intake. You really don't lose much through it. All right, 268, 254. After that, we start going down. So the short side is still affecting it with the intake manifold on. you got to remember, this is... This is the intake and my 770 car. Okay. 254 cubes. Well over 500 horsepower package. Uh, if you go to Wallace Racing. How do we do that? Let me grab my other phone. Okay. Depression was 28. Head flow through the intake and carb was 254. Cubic inch is a 340.30 over, I'm going to guess. So that's about 345. We put it in as typical race because that intake is more of a race intake than a street strip intake, I think. I feel. If you don't agree, let me know. All right, 522 horsepower between 6175 and 7000 and change. That's, like I said, probably a 500, pound, 500 horsepower package if you put some cam in it and some compression. Now the question is, is our pinch starting to give us trouble at this point? I have this pinch scienced out for 345 at 6500. It's, it's starting to get a little fast and it's definitely making it change. So I'm thinking of giving the port a little more, a little more volume which is a lot of work because you got to do it to eight ports because it's still a very tight port even though I did some changes where last time we cc'd it, it was 179 still a very tight port and I think part of that is holding us up so I think I'm going to do that before I do any more messing with the short side you guys let me know if I goof that up or not and uh, I think I'll probably do a rough out on the intake. Uh, probably should measure the intake completely stock. I bet it's pretty balanced the way it is. It's just extra work. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.